what did you two see back there? We met up with Andrew's double, Abraham. He was thinking about testifying against Mary, but good boy Andrew talked him out of it. That was a smart move. Are you fucking kidding me? So, again, when we talk about, like, nonverbal communication, it wasn't just the words that Daniel said. It was, like, the tone of voice. Like, good boy here. Like, really? You have to say it that way? <laughs> Welcome back to Little Hope. Last time, we lost a character. Not great. I blame the misclick. I, I like, I didn't know. I didn't know. So, besides that, we saw these other characters. It'll be interesting to see how they handle the loss, but also in general, how the story will wrap up. We might finish it this video. We'll have to see. I think it's Andrew. Really quick, I want to see what bearings we have, that kind of stuff. Andrew is still fearful. We have a lot of secrets that are new. I didn't realize that. Uh, from the execution site, the executions took place near the church. The exe uh, I imagine most of these might be the executions took place near the church. Tilly bore a remarkable resemblance to Taylor. We kind of knew this. The minister in the 1600s is involved in occult practices. Most of these feel like the same thing. Um, the monument reads Simon Carver and Leonard Carson. Okay, I'm going to assume that most of these updates are very similar. Things we know. Team Taylor! <laughs> Team Taylor. Taylor's neck was violently broken by a demon outside the church. Well, I'm sorry, Taylor. Homegrown hero! <sighs> So this is Daniel's. So this is about the knife. Daniel had to hold on to the knife instead of Taylor. So maybe that could have helped Taylor. Stranger. Vince assured Andrew he would go get help at the church door. When these are out of order, sometimes it's hard to tell which one is new. The little girl. Mary begged Carver not to execute David. It might be the only new one. Lost. Andrew didn't comment on the intent of- Oh, we already saw that one. Andrew showed compassion towards Mary, telling John she was just a kid. Authority figures. This is John's. John confronted the girl at the covered bridge. We already saw that. Way. John remained silent as Daniel expressed his grief for Taylor. Okay. I wonder how that plays into things. I mean, this is certainly grief. And not only that, but like grief in a very violent way. And how do we feel like we can't express it? Or maybe we can't. <laughs> Please stay on the trail! <laughs> Looks kind of steep. Yeah. I think we'll stick to the path. That sounds like a great idea. It sounds like there's swamp beyond there. Fireflies. Wait. Which way do we go? This may sound crazy, but what if saving our doubles from execution is how we save ourselves? He's got a point. Those things we've seen are linked to the executions. Well, okay, let's go with that theory. If that were the case, that would be like saying that Angela and Taylor are inherently already doomed then because you haven't been able to save their past selves. I feel like that's a bit messed up. Granted, we can't... We're kind of past the point of no return with Taylor. Like, we can't save Taylor anymore, which is unfortunate. But, like, that's like saying we can't save Angela anymore. 
because her double is already gone. That's like, that's not great. I mean, I think if we're in a situation like this, we're going to be trying to find a way to get out of it. Like, that's a very natural thing. We're, we're built to try to survive. And, like, maybe this is the correct answer, so to speak. But it's not a great one, if that's what it means. Okay, so John's block demon at the door. John's block. This is a good premonition. John blocking a door with a sledgehammer. Hey, Angela. Another grave. Mary! Mary Milton. Mary's grave. There's nothing about how or why she died. This is believed to be the resting place of Mary Milton. Mary was the source of many accusations against alleged witches. Pastor Carver took her under his wing, where he instructed her and prayed with her. Ooh. Before she incriminated several townspeople. Because of her controversial role in the witch trials, many of the townspeople turned their faces against her. Like the mannequins. Her remains were buried at the edge of town. Ooh. It's like she's not even allowed to peacefully rest with people. Huh. So in the end, she was completely ostracized. Dangerous, unstable structure. Sight and anything here not falling apart? <gasps> no. The bus. <laughs> but we left that ages ago! This. Fireflies. That's what's causing the glow. That's kind of beautiful. Falling Don't apart. Kind of weird looking. Me. My apologies for the lateness of the hour, but I must speak with you. What ails you, my friend? It is Mary. I am troubled by her, by the part she has played in these trials. Those trials trouble us all. There is more to this. I saw her smile as her own sister was executed. She took pleasure from it. Are you certain? I am. But now that she speaks of guilt and remorse, it is hard not to believe her. Keep away from her, Abraham. No good can come from being with that child. Too late. With her brother and sister gone, Mary now lives under my roof. Your charity places you in grave danger. What do you advise? Tell the court you suspect she toys with us all. That you saw her delight in her own sister's death. I implore you. I am torn. Mary seems full of Keep remorse. Your suspicions to yourself, and it's our community which will suffer. None of us is safe from her wild imaginings. Very well. If the court will listen, I will speak. That would be so hard to just, like, ostracize a child, though, to make that choice. I am bewitched. You're not bewitched. How else can your presence be explained? I, I can't explain this, but you're not. She has conjured you to defend her. To press me into silence. Only the devil could create a demon who so resembles me. I'm not a demon. But we do look alike, which I agree is pretty damn weird. What do you want from me? I want to know what you're going to say to the court. About Mary. I was decided to speak to the court. Now I am not so sure. I know how this must look, but you have to speak out. Tell everyone what the girl did, like your friend is telling you to. The devil has sent you to tempt me. I must not succumb. Little Hope is no longer the town I knew. Strange and disturbing events have become commonplace. <laughs> you, whatever you are, are but one of these. Revealing the truth about Mary may save my friend but it does not sit easily with me that in doing so I condemn a child. 
encouraging or instructive, speak out against the girl or the priest is the villain. I've said this before. I am not a fan of the priest. So let's go with this. The priest is the villain. Putting it all on a kid isn't right. The priest is the one driving this whole thing. That's way off. We got to stop the kid. No other way to do this. Okay, John. Reverend Carver is a man guided by God. No one can doubt that. Okay. So we have seen historically how two things can be true at the same time. Someone can be a leader in the church and they can do not great things with kids. Which, of course, are like extremely difficult things to talk about, but these things are still extremely traumatic. And avoiding, avoiding these conversations doesn't... It just adds to the trauma. It's like more trauma on top of trauma. So recognizing that two things can be true at the same time allows more conversations to happen, which in my mind reduces the chance that there's just going to be like shit piles of trauma piled on top of shit piles of trauma because that's the last thing we need. <sighs> he had bearings. Well, I compose myself after that. We had bearings that were updated during that conversation. Um, and you told us look like Abram that or Abraham that Mary was a victim. A little girl. Uh, Joseph advised Abraham to speak out against Mary's maliciousness. Also find it interesting, like during those interactions, we have all of these other characters, uh, Angela. John, especially like super early on, have seen their doubles. And then we have characters like Andrew who who hasn't basically seen their double until now. And that would be a weird situation too, because everybody else maybe has had time to, I guess, adjust to this idea of the double and like seeing their double ahead of them or in front of them, like seeing it play out in front of them. And then we have Andrew who hasn't seen that. And I can imagine that being weird because like, oh, what's wrong with me where I don't have one? Or it could also be this thing where that gives him time to adjust to the idea that, oh, this is coming out of brace myself, or even what will this be like to see this in front of me? Because we've seen these characters have a variety of reactions to seeing that. Uh, I remember Taylor's in particular where it was like, oh my gosh, it was like seeing myself. Because Andrew seemed the most calm about it. And, and potentially that's why. We've seen this play out with everybody else ahead of us. And maybe that's given him time to adjust to this concept. It almost seemed to mirror like his double. His double seemed fairly calm about the situation. I mean, uncertain in the sense that what do I do about Mary? But still, they seemed a bit calmer than potentially some of the others. Granted, a lot of the characters that we've seen from the past were fairly stoic and potentially that's just, I don't know how the game is portraying people from the past, or how we imagine people from the past. Bad move there, man. Standing up for the kid is probably gonna do us all in. I hope you're wrong. I... I'm sorry. I know that I purposely made this choice for Daniel. But what? Like, Daniel was the one who, from the very beginning, like, started standing up for Mary because Mary was, like, hiding in the barrel and Daniel was like, don't touch her. And now he's the one being like, that's a bad move, man. Like, let me judge you for this choice that you made. It feels so inconsistent. And don't get me wrong. We, ha we may have people in our lives who are inconsistent like that. And the inconsistency can feel like whiplash because <sighs> having consistent responses from people around us really does help us figure out like what the fuck to do with, with people around us. Basically, I always picture this where if I come home and I, I tell my parents like, hey, I got an A and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so great. What that does is it tells me, it reinforces my behavior. It tells me like, great, A's are good. And that tells me what to do more of to receive praise from my parents. And then if the next day or next semester, I don't know, pick a time period, it's an analogy. I come home and they say, oh my gosh, I got an A. And they're like, how could you? How could you try to take the spotlight from me? Don't you know that I'm going through a hard time? Like if we receive that kind of a response from our parents, 
for the exact same behavior, that's super inconsistent. And it makes it hard to know, well, okay, day one, this is a good thing. And, and that basically tells me to keep doing this thing. But then day two, I can't do this thing. And it's, it's very confusing. And it doesn't tell us what to do, basically. And the example that I use is, of course, if our parents are doing this, but this happens with all of our relationships, right? We, we kind of, most of our communication is nonverbal. As in most of the communication that happens is, is based on body language or tone of voice or, or these kinds of things. And consistency helps with that. Consistency tells us what to keep doing or not to keep doing in order to keep this relationship going, to build relationships. And we are built for connection. So when we have inconsistencies like this, and again, there's, there's this context that like me as a player, I have totally impacted this. But I think that this is good to, these are good conversation points, which is why I bring it up. But when we have inconsistencies like this, it's, it makes me sit back and go, okay, Daniel, then, then what the fuck do you want? Right? Like if, if I'm going to continue this friendship, for example, or, or something like that, like basically if I'm going to make you happy, what, like, what does that mean? Because day one, it, it potentially would have been defending Mary, but now later on day two, it's not defending Mary. So, so what do you want? There's also this context within the game that maybe we would have learned more information that could have changed people's minds. And that's where the value of uh, really effective communication comes into play. But that's why I'm sitting here, like the, just the, the general feeling of inconsistency is why I'm sitting here going, I'm sorry, what the fuck? What do you want from me? But I felt that that was, a, that was it's really, really well demonstrated, this idea of like why consistency with our relationships is so important. So was that a tangent? Yes, I thought it was important, though. So back to the game. Oops. Uh, For sakes. What happened? You get a chance to confront Mary? No. No. We never even saw her. Fuck. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> I feel like Andrew and I are the only ones, like, not trying to... Let's check that out. Like, he was a child. It'll get us out of these damn woods, and we can talk on the way. Oh, I'm dead. Can we do anything else in this house? Oh, nope, there's fog. Sorry, fog! Sorry, I will go... Oh no, there's fog both ways. Andrew, Andrew! Okay, out of my way. <laughs> Just trying to listen to the fog. Not sure I want the answer. So what did you two see back there? Oh. We met up with Andrew's double, Abraham. He was thinking about testifying against Mary, but good boy Andrew talked him out of it. That was a smart move. Are you fucking kidding me? So, again, when we talk about, like, nonverbal communication, it wasn't just the words that Daniel said. It was, like, the tone of voice. Like, good boy here. Like, really? Do you have to say it that way? <laughs> and can you, can you imagine the facial expressions if we had been, you know, having, like, a face-to-face -face conversation, not perpetually fast-walking all away from this fog? Power-walking is a better way to talk about it. Perpetually power walking away from this. Mm, this is another keyword. Perpetually power walking from this. Persuasive fog? Furious fog. Ooh, it's better. better. Whatever we saw back there or thought we saw, we're still in grave danger. Um, thoughtful or assertive? We might have missed our chance or we must stop Mary. Uh, thoughtful? There's gotta be a way of stopping the girl. We don't. We might have already missed a chance to change things. You had a chance to get Mary exposed for what she is. A liar and a faker. Wow. Put her in the dock for a change. Why didn't you take it? We don't know for sure that stopping Mary will help us out. It's just a theory. It may only be a theory, but right now it's all we've got. This is a one-shot deal. We get it wrong and there's no replay. It's game over, so <laughs> I'm up for doing whatever it takes. Come on. Let's take a look. Also, I want to add, John was the one in the beginning who was like, people jumped to conclusions back in the day. And now he's the one sitting there going, well, we need to get after that girl. Like, again, it's very inconsistent. 
and I know that my choices as a player, especially with a game like this, where like your choices matter, and and not all choices matter significantly, but sometimes I feel like your choices change their personality traits, therefore how they might interact subtly in in conversation. So I know that my choices could have impacted this, but it, it's one of those things where it's like John has just changed in regards to that attitude, and and changed rather emotionally. Like this is an emotionally charged way that he has changed. It's one of those things where my reaction is almost like, oh, that is a very touchy subject. <laughs> I think over here. Oh, that looks like a postcard, John. You're not picking it up, so that's okay. I'll help you out, buddy. None of these look great. Oh, that's super not great. Oh. Well, I'm guessing that's a death one. Just shot in the dark here. Pressed into silence, that's what it was called. I shouldn't laugh at that. It's a dark humor though. Ooh, I love the light reflecting on like the surfaces. <sighs> See another glinty inspect. Major Hale's land deed? A oh, land deal. Fears protests will surely escalate as closure looms. So, like a newspaper from when the land is being sold. I'm assuming we go up there, considering John's up there. Oh! They love this mayor. <laughs> For future prosperity, 666. Lovely. All right, John, where are we going, buddy? Up here? Up here. But it says no entry, John. What are we gonna do about that? Check this out. Ignore it. Ignore it. Hey! That guy's a menace. I don't think he gets how bad a mess we're in. Come on, inside. He doesn't seem to be a menace. He also can leave the town, unlike us. I bet he has a cell phone. That like works. Well, no one's been here for a long time. <laughs> my time to speak before the judge. I'll grab each other. I am filled with dread. I cannot know how my testimony will be received. The devil has blinded so many to what is real and what is not. Nothing good will come of this. His words will seek to twist the truth. Allow me to judge what is true. Abraham and Joseph are allies in this deception. And lest we forget, you condemned Joseph to death only yesterday. Um. Or do you now question that decision? I have heard nothing today to sway my conviction. Joseph consorted with the same malicious force as his wife. For this, the court thanks Reverend Carver, who faced the devil's wrath to present the evidence. Mm. It is only my duty, Judge. Now, however, this court is duty-bound by law to seek out the truth. We must therefore examine these claims made by Abraham against Mary. If I may speak briefly, Judge Wyman. Time is short, Reverend. Be indeed brief. Mary has shown great fortitude to speak out against the evil here. Many would have lacked her courage. Yet her reward for exposing this brooding covered in our midst is to be besmirched. Her courage is not in question. It is her intent we must be certain of. Her accuser is the very man entrusted to care for this innocent child. Plain to see he is not fit for such a task. And I would ask the court to have Mary placed elsewhere. Who would you have be a new ward, Reverend? I am prepared to take responsibility for the child. If the court agrees. First, the court must hear what Abraham has to say. No decision can be made on the child until then. Abraham! What am I to do? Some would have me speak out against Mary, but could a child truly be capable of such evil? 
aggressive or sympathetic. Oh, we're playing as Daniel. Well, not aggressive. Let's go as sympathetic. This is tough. I get that. Would be for anyone. Mary, it's just a kid. Tell the court what you have come here to say. Speak up, boy. Out with it. Mary has spoken of evil spirits, devilry and witchcraft. Things many cannot believe could exist here in I'm Little not Hall. here for history and hearsay. Get to the point, boy. Mary is tormented. The apparitions she has seen, they have plagued her, stolen her innocence. Hmm. Some suggest she is in league with these creatures, but no one can be certain. Myself, least of all. Can any of us truly know a child's mind? You claim I lack the ability to see the truth. <sighs> I beg forgiveness. I would never suggest such a thing. My time is not for wasting. You and the priest have irked me enough for one day. I have more to say. I have already given you enough time. Furthermore, Mary is to be placed into the care of Reverend Carver. Now stand down. So, like, that comment of, can anyone truly know the mind of a child? Like, the judge took that personally. <laughs> What's that meme of, like, and I took that personally? Because the judge took that as, like, an attack. Like, got super defensive. Like, how dare you say that I can't comprehend that? But, like, saying those things sometimes is fair. It's not an attack on someone to say that. Or an attack on someone's job or something like that, right? And then everything else after that, because of that level of defensiveness, judge didn't give a shit. I also think the judge is the same, um, maybe voice actor, but the same character model as the neighbor from the very beginning. Who, like, um, found whatever their name was with the box of matches before they ran back into the fire. Um, so this is also one of those things where it's like, why is the priest fighting so hard for the kid? Like, what is your what is your interest in this? If we do everything for a reason, if we do everything for purpose, like, what is your what is your interest in that? And like having someone third party, which it seems like was it Abraham seemed as third party as you could get. Like, maybe that is the best place for that kiddo instead of just automatically giving giving like custody of the kiddo to the priest. But concepts of like. Like, the power structures back in the day of would have been different. And this idea of, like, questioning power um, and things like that. That would have been entirely different back then. <sighs> Tell me everything. Did you see Andrew's double again? He told the judge that Mary did nothing wrong. Like, she's the victim here. Oh, that's bad. Very, very bad. Shit! So what happens now? This helps us. Has to. We now know for sure that we can alter what happens. You agree with him? And certain or supportive? Uh, I mean, we don't get it, but let's go with supportive. It went down just like he said. Yeah. Are you going to argue with what happened? I mean... Oh... What the fuck? <laughs> we can't stay. Let's get out of here. This is the factory that closed down, I bet. Explore the factory. But we have shit to explore! Look at those outfits. This place shut down way, way back. Life as a kid in the 70s. Everything was ahead of me. Like the 80s. There's gotta be another exit. Maybe on the ground floor? <laughs> That's the stupidest joke ever. Oh, yeah. 
memory of James Clark, sadly missed by his many friends and colleagues. Okay, open. There we go. Oh, kiss my ass. Very eloquent. Uh, dear Mr. Barnes, employment warning letter. Following our recent disciplinary meeting, I am writing regarding your attendance and behavior. Management had made or have made many efforts to accommodate your difficult cuts, your difficult circumstances, and recent injury by accepting your reoccurring absences. However, continued warnings regarding attendance, lateness, and intoxication have prompted us to issue a formal written warning. If you keep doing that, something bad will happen. Mr. Barnes. Who's Mr. Barnes? The names that we've seen are all like, um, Carver, things like that, right? They're not like last names that start with B. B, B, B. What begins with B? I can't think of things. Bob, books, and barbecues? Family photo. Oh, it's like Mary. Get over here. You gotta see this. Megan? Megan. This is too fucking weird. <sighs> this is too much. Way too fucking much. First, a load of weirdo witch killers from ancient history look just like us. Now, we got the creepy family of the year winners who also look just like us. What the actual fuck? What does it mean, though? Do you think they died like the other lookalikes? No clue. Who knows what happened to them? Maybe we're all stuck in the same nightmare. You really want a souvenir? From this night? From this place? All I know, I'm keeping hold of this. Yeah, why keep it? What you said about all this being a nightmare. You mean that? If it's my nightmare, why are you guys all in it? <laughs> Any of us could say the same thing. I don't know what's real here. Are you the real Andrew? Oh, come on. So wait, who are those people in the photograph? Maybe time is fucked up here. Like, that really is us in that photo. But they're around the same age as us, as far as I can tell. So this idea that maybe they're reliving lives like Tanya. Tanya's is something in the very, very beginning where it was like like a record playing on repeat. Like maybe that's it. But then why what like what is different about now? To where now <clears throat> they're getting flashbacks of their past selves and now they're trying to actually stop it. Cause like otherwise wouldn't wouldn't they have had been having flashbacks and like all these other things uh within every lifetime? Secret found. Little Hope Factory to close. Um, hundreds to lay off. By the Carvers. We already knew this, though. Bus drivers wanted. Full trading given. Uniform provided. Huh. Did you just think that that was included in the text, too? I still love that there's that dope sign. Dope? Don't do it. Okay, dare. The store. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Hello. Oh, looks like there's like a name block. Name block? Oh, it just fell. That's cursive. Having read Captain Bond's <laughs> Captain Bond's letter attesting to the affair within Little Hope and heard the petitions of the townspeople, I write to express my single concernment. Pastor Carver's teaching strayed from true doctrine and piety. Doesn't that sound familiar? His mind wandered from the fellowship of saints and surrendered into sin over many years. Ugh. 
please attend to his past behaviors which infect and corrupt the town. I ask a commission be appointed to examine such affairs of last year, including the manner of that girl. Thy servant, something, something, Wyman judge. Interesting. Why is that just lying there? Oh, did it break from that thing? But why, why of all letters, why is that framed? in a random factory. <laughs> you think it'd be something like the, the stuff from the museum where it's like, here's the founding of our town. And then even then it'd probably be in the museum, right? Oh, well, here's a door that we can't get out of. Factory closure. Dope, don't do it. Due to liquidation of Little Hope textiles. Now oh, we already knew that. I guess I kind of expected too. If this would be like a living, living repeated lives over and over, like random wanted posters from other lives that they lived. Oh no, we wait. We did see secrets. Where did we see? What did we see? Um, so this. No, not that picture. This picture, the photo from 1917, from like the the Great War, World War One. This one where it looked like it had um andrew and daniel's face i mean that's that's it right like these are like little little glimpses of like other lives like we're not seeing flashbacks of i mean i guess that's true that is happening these faces keep popping up in little hope's history okay so what's your theory smart guy we're dead that's what i said to taylor we're fucking dead great Well, then, Taylor's just extra dead. Ugh. Screech. Isn't it? What's the story here? She leave him for some other guy? Well, no, we have the sun and the moon. That's Tanya and Vince. So that means that Tanya was dating Vince, and Vince is the guy who's been following us. So then, wouldn't he recognize us? Like, wouldn't he, wouldn't he have looked at Tani and been like, yo, you look like, you look like someone that I used to know. Especially uh, because, like, that looked like it hit her hard, that looked like it hit him hard. <clears throat> like, her death, it, maybe it was traumatic for him in some way, or just, like, in general, losing your first love. You hear that? Right below us. We need to find a way out of here, now. <clears throat> so let's say he is ooh, what's this? let's say he was Tanya's boyfriend then like why would why wouldn't he have said something tragic fire caused by child's toy the cause of a horrific fire at a little hope family residence this is what we saw at the very beginning um at the weekend may have been a child's toy Lieutenant David Favre of the Little Hope Volunteer Fire Department told the Herald that the gas range in the kitchen had been left on. Child's doll sat near it. He believed the doll caught fire and fell off the range, setting the kitchen ablaze. Can you hush? I am trying to read. The fire resulted in five deaths. Okay, so mom, dad, Daniel, or Dennis, um, Tanya, Megan. Five. Not Andrew. Because his 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 thing wasn't there. Stop! The horror can start when I'm done reading, please. Um, fire resulted in five deaths amongst the Clark family. One survivor, Anthony Clark, 18, has been questioned by police after being arrested on suspicion of causing the fire. However, the fire investigation is now thought to exonerate the young man who will be released today. The family's minister, Reverend. Leonard Carson said the fire is a tragedy. It's terrible. Wait, okay. In the very beginning, the mom, whoever Angela was, Anne, Anne said that the girl Megan was being held back by the reverend. And that's why she was so worried about the kid. Oh, that's, hmm. It's terrible for a family to be decimated. 
they're going to be through there. They've been going through a difficult time recently, as many families do. But they were a good, hard-working, and loving family. And I was helping them through their troubles. It's a tragedy that it should end like this. No date for the funeral has yet been arranged. Both the fire department and mayor's office praised the swift action of police officers who arrived first on the scene and were able to prevent the blaze claiming a sixth victim. So, okay, the fire happened. And Andrew's person, Andrew's past person, ran to the fire. But because the police uh, and the fire department got there so soon, they saved him. Officer Reynolds and Hoffman's quick thinking prevented another death, said the mayor, who recommended the men for a commendation. So that's what the commendation was that we saw. But the priest is so heavily involved again. Like, maybe that is connected to everything being replayed, too. And maybe that's why we see him also being replayed everywhere, too. But then... Why is Andrew still here, being replayed with everybody else, if he didn't die in the fire? I guess the implication is that everybody died, right? So bored. That's heavy. Why would you move Andrew, that? Andrew, get your ass over here and, and not help just me out. go to the doors that are like there with no glass. What's up? <sighs> you take that side. I'll take this side. Push together, right? Good. Now, push! Mm. I was taking a drink! Why? Why would you do that? Oh, shit! Oh, fuck. I heard those sounds the whole time. Hey, are you okay down there? Fight okay! Oh, fuck. Which buttons are what? Oh, shit. Or reassuring. Oh. Reassuring, reassuring, reassuring. Go! Oh. Hometown hero, right? Let's go before anything else happens. That's calm of you to say, John. <sighs> Those times are stressful. I don't want people to die. Oh my god. I think it's interesting that the fog allows this kind of stuff to happen, where they like split up or whatever it is that's happening, but not the other times. Daniel! You out here? <sighs> shit. Double shit. You see Daniel out here? Close the no. gate. He's not here yet. Okay, let's keep going. Daniel will be okay. He'll catch us up. <sighs> it's been a while since I've been Angela. Daniel! You okay? 
Daniel, please answer me. We've also heard about John's condemnation in the past and haven't seen it. So that's great. I also don't think that Daniel's Daniel? dead. Where are you, buddy? Andrew! Yeah. Hey! You they did guys! this with Angela. I'm up here! Boy, am I happy to see you. At least I'm not the only one damp and disheveled. weird camera angles. It's just not great. And did you spotted that kid, Mary? Not seen her. Is there a car here? Is it Vince's? Vince usually has the sun things. Because we saw him holding the sun at the funeral. There was like the, the book stuff about the, the sun and the moon, kind of like mythology, I guess. Um, everything that kind of talks about him, talks about it in that way. Nice. We'll try to forget I just saw this. Release Mr. Clark leaving the Little Hope Police Department yesterday. A line has been drawn under the tragic case of the Clark House fire. Onlookers watched as Anthony Clark, the only survivor of the blaze, was released, released from police. Well, because, yeah, they, they decided that the... Or they found that the fire was caused by a toy. It wasn't, like, purposeful. Thursday afternoon, one onlooker said that poor boy, he must be going through hell right now. It's so, like... The trauma of everybody in your family dying. And so suddenly and unexpectedly... The Herald approached Mr. Clark for a comment. <laughs> what the fuck? Of course he's not gonna have a comment. <laughs> Let's comment. Can you have a comment on like the worst fucking day of your life? <sighs> so like it's all cut off, so we can't see the rest of this. But like blamed Clark, who has found the box of matches in his hand at the scene. But like they can tell though, this is my impression. But like they can tell that there wasn't, like, accelerant. So if there's not accelerant, then, like, the matches is kind of a moot point. Granted, this would have been, like, what, 70s, so let's take that as you will. He was found with a box of matches in his hand at the scene for causing the fire. When Clark left the Little Hope Police Department, passersby were heard to something burned in hell. So, like, just because he was found not guilty, so to speak, or, like, wasn't charged, doesn't mean that society didn't look at him and say, you're guilty. Because these are two very different things. Especially in the small town, how much shame, like, how, how, how would that affect you? And then also, then, like, how much would you blame yourself? Like, there's the, the actual, like, trauma of having this happen and, like, losing your family and your support system and everything that would come with that, but then... Potentially, there's that additional trauma of everybody in the community blaming you and how they treat you differently and all of that additional stuff and that additional shame, blame, and guilt kind of layered on top of that. That sucks. You see that? I mean, at this point, it could be anybody. I've seen a lot of people. <laughs> oh! Megan. The M names are getting stuff in my Stay head. Stay on your toes. Anything could happen. It's like a daisy chain. No one in Little Hope is safe while you still draw breath, Joseph. Oh. You must die today. Not even your wife Amy was spared your lust to serve Satan. Damn me if you must. You're not fit. Speaking of my late wife. There is still fight in you. I must drive the devil out for the safety of everyone here. Oh, 
know what he's saying? Joseph, do you renounce the devil and all his teachings? I can't in no sin. I'm no disciple of the devil. I'm down as infected with madness. Roy, you by six. Why would you have her watch the eyes? We have to stop this. Help Joseph or confront Mary. I don't think confronting her will help. Oh, this would be so traumatizing to watch as a child. I guess let's help Joseph. If that's not gonna help, they're gonna see it as like proof of witchcraft. I also get the feeling that like Joseph just like stopped caring about everything after the trauma of seeing what happened to his wife and seeing like nobody else Come is helping on, him. Help me! Like he just didn't give a Look, single shit about anything else. There can be no more doubting. This is witchcraft. More stones! Really? The devil must be crushed from within him. Do not flinch. The fate of little orc rests in your hands. dies by crushing. <sighs> Again, why would you have a child watch that? <sighs> We're screwed. There is no way out from this nightmare. We don't have a lot of time. Time for what? <laughs> No! John! What are you doing? The I can't fuck? get away from this thing. You saw what happened to Taylor. I'm not going the same way. Are you crazy? We gotta move! Oh, lovely. Ooh. Mary? Or not Mary. Angela, move. Resentful or reassuring? Please, reassuring. Please hurry. Please John, fuck up. Please hurry! The. Bearings, bearings. Oh god. Come on, you fucking ready! Oh, oh no, oh no, okay. Whoa. How would you know where to hit? It moves so fast! Angela, run. Run, 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 run. Is that one? Oh, thank God there was no problem for that. How's that feel, fucker? <laughs> Fuck, I said so much more often the longer we get into the video. Oh, you gotta help her. Help her, help her, help her. I missed that QT and I have to make up for it. Come on, come on. Sometimes it makes it hard to get into that little circle. Harder than it looks. Oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. It won't open. People don't move that way. Get inside! Oh my god, stop! Fearful or heroic? Uh, heroic sounds better. Heroic. Heroic. Thing is only interested in me. Get out of here. Go. Oh. Hold 
Hold it back! You can get away! Escape! I did! You don't have to do this! This is stupid! Get out of there! Is it gone? I don't see it anymore. Right, because it just Where couldn't break through that door. Now? Place looks like it burnt down. Something here isn't right. What's new? Nothing here feels right. We know where we are. This is the house. This is like the one thing that connects all of them. I mean, not the one thing, right? Like, Little Hope as a whole connects them. But they weren't all a family. So if we're going with a theory of, like, past lives... Hi, Megan. If we're going with a theory of past lives, then they weren't all a family in those past lives, right? Here, they're all, they're all a family. There has to be stuff in this house that we can find. I also hate those sounds that are outside. They can stop anytime now. Okay. Why am I looking at this? Oh, great. So this is like a showdown location. We're gonna be surrounded. That's what's gonna happen here. This is great. Because again, like, they couldn't just break through. Letter from Reverend Carson. <laughs> Dear Anne. Thank you for your cons or thank you for your letter regarding Megan. Thank God that in the past everybody wrote letters. So that way when we're playing a game later on, we have evidence that we can pick up that tells us the plot of what happened in the past. <laughs> thank you for your letter regarding Megan. I understand your concerns and I assure you that your daughter's rebellious behavior is not unusual. I've helped parents with similar issues and would be happy to help with Megan's moral guidance. Mm. Hebrews 12.11 says that all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruits of righteousness. Please see me after service on Sunday so we can arrange time for some personal instruction. I mean, I think that... I think that... Religion and spirituality can be um, helpful, like depending on your own like beliefs and all of that other stuff. But I also think that there's a time and a place for it. I think that if we see that, like the church or even like religious leaders as being like a one size fits all solution for everything, then that is not great because they're not trained in everything. You know, religious leaders aren't trained in therapy. They're not trained in medicine even right and that is kind of the, the danger of going to the church for everything granted this is a different time period and this did happen more like historically right like religious leaders were just one size fits all kind of a, a solution for everything um really before like therapy became a big thing or, or even like going to a doctor kind of a thing and then some of that kind of depend kind of uh, been a personal belief system thing or access but it's definitely like as with everything you know if a doctor shouldn't be a one-size-fit-all approach for everything because it shouldn't right doctors don't specialize in everything doctors don't really do therapy then the same is true for religious leaders
And children are so vulnerable. A lot of times they don't speak up about these things because they don't know the words for them. Hole? There's a hole. Just like in the ground. I'm not, I don't want to go upstairs yet. No. So how would a kid speak up for this stuff? How would a kid say, like, this is what I need or this is not what I need? Because a kid wouldn't know. The key in the clock? Why? What? What key remains? That's a that's a thing. There's something here. How? How would you know there's something here? It just looks like soot. So is that a drawing of what we saw before? That thing that was with Megan. That looked like Nosferatu. Like they couldn't get through this window. Really. Mm -hmm. Good. the worst. John's is the worst. It's just so unnatural. Oh, here's another thing. It's kind of a late for a postcard, like... Oh! This postcard is about the next game. This is a House of Ashes postcard. It's like a little teaser trailer for the next game. So I feel like we're we're I feel like we're kind of at the end of the game here. Right? If we're having this kind of standoff, it kind of implies that we're, you know, we're kind of done. Ah, the tire swing. That was there in the beginning, wasn't it? Hmm. Oh, but Tanya's doesn't appear, or Taylor's, or whoever's you want to say. Interesting. Is that because she's already gone? You're gonna want to see this. Angela and I were married. This makes less and less sense. <laughs> they say that as though it's the first time historically they've been married. Like, they were married in the witch trial days, too! Modern Guide to Successful Parenting. Oh gosh, what does this say? Huh. <sighs> Parents unhappy with their own upbringing can overcompensate. They might not want their children to feel the same as they do about their own parents. They yearn to be friends with their offspring. Offspring. What a weird way to talk about it. Um, I mean, like that can happen, but sometimes that we don't know how. It's kind of like, oh, I don't want, I don't want my kids to have the same childhood that I did. But then we don't know how to make that happen. So maybe we fall into old habits uh, of what we saw growing up. Um. So, parents accept theories that encourage love as a solution to conflict. This leads to the belief that if their children misbehave, they should not be angry or punish them, but instead indulge them in even greater displays of love. Spoiling a child in this way uh, has grave consequences. Grave consequences, really? Children become demanding and disagreeable. Parents suppress anger at their, at their child's behavior, but cannot keep a lid on their frustration till they explode, frightening and confusing the child. The parents feel guilty and at a loss of what to do, feeding a new cycle of misbehavior. <clears throat> the problem lies with parents trying to be patient when patience is exhausted and the child needs cons 
needs correction. They are indecisive and irres irresolute when firmness is required. But like, I'll finish reading this. If no one corrects him, him, are you assuming that the child is a him? The child will only escalate his behavior until his provocations become so serious that his parents snap. An eruption restores peace temporarily, but there is a danger or a danger in the aftermath. Parents who feel guilty at losing their temper forget to give their child time to endure his punishment. Instead, they attempt to undo the correction by easing penalties. Discipline requires consistency. Both parents must hold the line against a rebellious child and punishments followed through. Should one parent relax their discipline because of laziness or guilt, they leave an opening for a naughty child to exploit. Hmm. So much of this language is very strict. It's basically saying, like, it's very shame blaming guilting the parent first off. It's basically like saying, um, like, first off, if you can't hold your shit together as a parent, then it's your fault. Like, that's what it's saying, right? Like, um, you have, like, if you, if you relax anything, it's because of laziness, right? Like, that's your fault. Laziness, terms like laziness imply that there's some kind of a moral failing. That there's something wrong with us if we don't do whatever it is that we're doing, right? And I bring these things up because our words have power, like, the, the implied meaning behind our words matter. That's why certain words can bring up certain emotions. So it's this idea that, first of all, hit, like, assuming that the kid is a guy, so first of all, like, naughty children are only boys. And you have to do this thing. You have to do what we tell you to, first of all. Like, this is what discipline is. So it's defining, first off, what discipline is. So very rigid in that way. But also, if you don't stick to this, it's your fault and very strict language. There's no room to have a conversation in this book about like, you know, maybe here are some alternatives or maybe this will work or maybe this won't work, right? None of that, none of that. And this book also, I noticed, doesn't say shit. It's a lot of very big language. It's a lot about like, here are some things, right? But it doesn't actually sit down and say like, okay, but like, here's uh, here is what, and it's, a, it's also very, let me back that up. The book is not only rigid, but it implies, like, horrible things, like, grave consequences. Like, fucking what? Like, what? And so it, it implies shame, blame, guilt, and also fear that you're going to fuck up as a parent, which is already a parent's, like, greatest fear. So you have to do this thing that we tell you. We're defining this for you. You have to do this as a parent. And if you don't do this, it's your fault. Like, you have something wrong with you. You're failing morally, that moral judgment, that moral failure, right? But it also doesn't fucking say what it is, right? It doesn't actually say what it means to be consistent. Like, what does that mean? It uses a lot of language that doesn't mean anything. And again, it's your fault if you fail. I mean, it's not actually, but like, that's what this book is saying. Like, even I'm looking at this book going like, okay, yeah, that sounds all fine and dandy, but like, what the fuck? <laughs> Setting limits. Let's continue to read it, of course. Parents must set limits. And indeed, a child prefers his parents to be firm, providing they are also fair. But again, like, what does that mean? This is essential training in getting on with other people. Without it, the child believes the world will conform to their demands and tantrums. Such spoiled children. Again, like this language. It's always negative. Spoiled children. We never look at that and say, yes, I want that. If we don't look at a word and say, yes, I want that. It probably is because society has taught us over time that this is a really shitty concept. Such spoiled children are often shocked by the real world and cannot cope in an environment that doesn't indulge their whims. They face becoming unpopular <laughs> or learning the hard way how to socialize with others. Oh god, there's more. <clears throat> Parents must actively intervene in establishing limits, but again, they don't fucking tell you how. What does that mean? It means nothing. This book is telling you, you have to do this or you're a terrible person, you're a terrible parent, but it doesn't tell you how which automatically inherently means you're, you're a terrible person because you don't know how to do this because nobody is teaching you how to do this. But you're afraid of not doing this, which is why you bought the book. Like, <laughs> you see the conundrum here. 
A child that box can be forced to do what's asked of them, whether it's stopping them drawing or turning the TV off. A well-adjusted parent can then stand up to their children while maintaining friendly relations. But again, how? This this book is, is a lot of fear-mongering. Ooh, that's a good way of saying it. It's accurate. It's a lot of fear-mongering. It doesn't actually... Ha this book, it feels like, is intended to put fear in people's hearts is not intended to actually help because if it was intended to actually help, it would it would actually have like more breakdowns of here's how to actually do this stuff. It bothers me that it doesn't do that. Be firm in the face of refusal or yelling. In time, the child will learn where the boundaries of acceptable behavior lie. But again, how do we define that? Bad manners. Again, how do we define As he approached, again, again, why is it a he? As he approaches towards adolescence, a child is apt to lose his manners because it's teenagers <laughs> it's puberty <laughs> he talks tough again like why is this always boys leaves his shoelaces untied that's what bad manners is <laughs> leaves uh, arrives at the dinner table with dirty hands many things are happening here he's adopting models of behavior of other kids his age so like let's blame let's blame the the bad kid at school <laughs> and asserting his independence. He's fine with his behavior. Parents imagine the child has forgotten all they've taught him, but he hasn't. He knows good behavior from bad. Oh, that's very, um, it's very dichotomous, right? It's either one way or the other. That's not quite how the world works. Or he wouldn't rebel against it. Parents should understand that their child is growing up normally. Oh no, I didn't know. Let me keep reading the other pages. I, no. Sorry the wrong button. Parents should understand that their child is growing up normally. Angry feelings from a, a child are normal. Parents should under acknowledge these without excusing misbehavior. But again, how or what does this mean? A child needs to understand the difference between hostile feelings and hostile actions. But if you're not even explaining what that is, how, how can uh, the parent then take that information to teach it to their kid? The basics of well-adjusted behavior is the ability to recognize feelings and decide how to act on them. Some boys, again, why? Some boys may show no open rebelliousness, while girls show less bad manners than boys. Well, that's the thing. That's, hmm. That's very binary and, like, very... Here's what goes in the box of this gender, and here's what goes in the box of this other gender. Attentive parents can detect a change in attitude. Oh, so you don't, if you don't see a change in attitude, that's, like, you being a shitty parent and not noticing that. I had a lot of thoughts on that book. <laughs> Hi, Angela. <laughs> yes. Or Anne. Or, um, whatever your name was in the other past life. There's a lot of A names. I think I already looked at that. Oh, that book was a lot. A lot of thoughts on that. I don't know if there's anything else. I think we got a lot of secrets, actually. Got a decent chunk of the pictures. Oh, we got a lot of secrets. I'm only missing one. I'm missing number 10. I'm missing number 33, 34, and 43. Damn, I got a lot of secrets. That's pretty good. I mean, you always miss stuff, but... Well, yeah, we can't, like, we're not gonna go out there. Let's just go upstairs. Where? Oh, I'm close. Okay, I think it's right through here. And then to the left. Am I gonna get lost in this tiny house? Oh no. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? You hear that? I did. Can only be the girl. Let's go find her. I mean, it could be someone else. Like, it could be another double. We haven't seen Andrew's dead double. She's in here. Stay here. Hey, Bigfoot, find the goddamn vital, will you? Can't say. What are you doing? Where is <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> Mind the vinyl. No, wait. You protect me. You must. Wait, this isn't right. No way. 
Confess I what? assure all gathered here today that our town will be free of the devil's grasp. Together, by God's grace, little hope will prevail. <sighs> My word on it. This court is hastily convened, but with good reason. If we are to finally rid ourselves of the evil which has infested Little Hope, then we must act today. I accuse you, Mary, of witchcraft. What say you, Reverend? The evidence, as discovered through my investigation, is beyond question. Mary uses her puppet as a familiar to summon and serve the devil. We have been deceived by a child, by her guise of innocence. This puppet was mistakenly used to denounce Tabitha, but it has always belonged to Mary and Mary alone. She allowed her own kin to be executed as she watched in silence. That is not so! Liar! Now this dead child, this creature of Satan, has the marrow to accuse me, a man of God, of wrongdoing. Whatever she pulls, do not fall for her little girl act. She may be a child, but there's no doubt she means harm. She's malicious. It was never my intention to bring harm to this town or its people. Can you not help me? What can I do? If I could do something to stop this, I would, but now in her hour of greatest need, I this child of the damned pleads once more for the Wait. devil's help. I beg the court's indulgence. Please guide me at this time. This is your counsel. Troubled or enraged. There's something wrong in this town or Carver is evil. You know, let's spill some tea here. Carver's evil. This. The only madness is right here in this court. Carver, he's the evil one. We have been swayed by malice. The truth hidden from us, but not by Mary. Reverend Carver is the one urging us to believe in the devil. Be silent. <laughs> this is all You'll not deceive doing. us any longer. <laughs> Your true purpose is plain to see. I will see this town purged of all evil. He's right. Listen to what he's saying. Carver is to blame. You just, you just. What must I do to bring little hope back into the light? I fear the Reverend and what he's capable of. Impatient, destroy the damn doll. No, 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 insistent. You have to stop Carver, yeah. Let's keep going after Carver. You have to stop Carver. It's him, don't you get it? Yes. He's condemning Mary to take the heat off himself. Yes. I know what must be done here. The slow, dramatic walk. Be still. What is the meaning of this outrage? What I have just learned sickens me to my core. There are serious questions which must be asked of you. How can a man of God conduct himself in such a way? It's almost like that's Mary, not a defense. Your suffering is at an end. You are free to leave. Fool! Misled by a child! Do you not see what she is? The truth stares at you from the depths of hell, yet you see nothing. The devil's daughter has deceived you all. Not me. I see her. I see her. Satan's whore. You will pay heavily for your crimes. I was one of the first to fall under your spell. Now all of Little Hope is mesmerized by oh. you. She's a child. I have not the words. Without you, I would be dead. You saved me. I shall remember you all, my dears. But I didn't save you. <sighs> I can't believe it's finally over. You protected the girl, and you were right about the priest. He was the genuinely evil one. Let's get out of here. Well, we saw the Bible. Like all the newspapers, right? There was all that stuff where he at least did the witchcraft stuff. Tell me what happened. You see the girl, Mary? I think finally, 
This whole nightmare is over. Like, just like that? It feels too easy. Seriously? There's a lot of bearings being updated. <laughs> I'm real sorry. I know it wasn't your fault. Both of us been through some real tough time these past years. About half a mile or so, there's a diner with a working phone. You call for help and you leave this place. And don't you ever come back. Ain't nothing left here for you. <laughs> the same diner from the beginning. I'm real sorry for what I've put you all through. We've all had one hell of a rough night. You more than anyone. That's gonna haunt me forever. You're not alone here. Take it easy on We've yourself. We've all been through you hell. That, right? We're finally getting yeah, out of this hell. <laughs> I just wish we all could have made it. We're diverting all traffic through Little Hope. You okay, buddy? You seem a little confused. Yeah, I'm fine. I just want to get these folks to where they need to be. I doubt a short delay will trouble them too much. Nobody in the bus. They didn't show his ear before. <sighs> the burns. Just shut up! This isn't helping us find help or getting us out of here. And the sound is messed up. <laughs> Hi there. How you doing? Excuse me, but we're uh, looking for our bus driver. What? Have you seen him? That's funny. Sounds like you could use a drink. Better not, thanks. I need a clear head. Ah. Oh. Bridge is fine. What the hell is going on in there? Get the hell out of here! I'll go once I look you in the eye. Now let me in! Vince is checking on him. Hey! I don't think he gets how bad a mess we're in. Hmm. Vince probably heard that.
bearings do we have? Homegrown hero. Daniel urged Andrew to leave and let go of the metal bar to fend for, herself, for himself in the factory basement. Daniel survived the night. Tanya didn't. Not Tanya. Taylor. <laughs> A lot of names! <clears throat> Vince assured Andrew that he would go get help. This is Vince's, like, section. Vince shouted to Andrew outside the factory, telling him this will all be over soon. Angela survived the night. The little girl. Andrew influences double to defend Mary's innocence and condemn the reverend. Lost. Andrew told his lookalike, Abraham, that Mary was a victim. We have an Andrew survived the night. Andrew found the bus driver. He was never far away. Yeah, I can say that. John survived the night. John survived the night. Technically, yeah. That's it. Game over. You're done. For now, at least. You could always try again, see if you can get a different result. He seems upset. Like, contemplated? A little, like, disappointed. Impressive. Almost survived intact. Almost. Gee, thanks. And you eventually found him. The bus driver. Maybe he can now put the past behind him. Until we meet again. Maybe in the Arabian Desert. Maybe somewhere else. But we will meet again. At least one more time. Like in the next week or so? <laughs> I know that the game has multiple endings, and if I remember right, there are some endings that are not great. Um, I believe that there are some endings where Vincent, um, like, calls the police on you, depending on if you choose to shoot at him or not kind of a thing. There is one ending where, uh, and maybe it's impacted by if you find the gun or not, but there is one ending where you die by suicide. And I guess if I... Like, my understanding of this game is this idea that we have this character who has experienced a lot of trauma. And they are forced to go back to the place where this trauma happened. Uh, it's not a choice. They're not, they're not like ready to process that trauma. But nonetheless, they are forced to go to that place. Which, uh, which means that they end up processing their trauma in a way where, could we call it psychosis? Where they are like seeing things or hearing things that are not there. I think that's the part that I'm not quite clear on. Like, is this quite literally... Or are these quite literally hallucinations? Or is it the game showing... Just like finding a way to represent these things, like how how they're processing through this trauma, um, because we do have this idea of like how do we 
how do we take these vague concepts like trauma and, and, and processing things that are not visual and, and show them in a video game? And then we have we have a character who's, who's processing through their trauma when they weren't intending to. They weren't ready. It's not like they were doing that through therapy. And, and your choices impact how well that processing goes, right? So trying to save the family members that didn't survive is a way to process through that trauma. And it's because of that concept of like trying to save them, right? Where I'm like, is it literally a, a hallucination? I'm not sure. I think the, the video game player in me like loves the game. I really do like these very story uh, story led or character driven games where your choices matter. I really do love those. I also love the mystery in it where I'm sitting here going, ooh, like what what's happening, right? Okay, it could be this theory or this theory. Like the 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 player in me loves that. I'm really conflicted though on the rest of it. I might be interrupted in a second by the credits. Maybe not. No, no, no. I'll just let this go. Okay. I'm a bit conflicted because I don't I don't like mental health to be the punchline. I I do like games that have more conversations about mental health, of course, and trauma is unfortunately something that is very prevalent in society. Um but we don't talk about it very often. And when we do talk about it, we usually talk about it as though it's like um we don't talk about the many complexities of trauma. And we don't talk about the fact that trauma is how we process things. And so I, I very much welcome tr uh, mental health to be something that shows up in video games because I welcome these conversations. But what I don't like is when it's it's like the the big reveal and the big plot point is like, oh, it's it's mental health like that. <sighs> that feels like it makes mental health like a punchline of a joke kind of a thing. And that feels like it encourages um, it encourages mental health stigma. So that for me is why I feel a bit conflicted about this game. Something that I had said before about Man of Madon is I really wish that they had put in Man of Madon some, some element, something in there that really made it to where two possibilities could be true depending on how you looked at it. And that could be like one or two extra clues that you find something like that to where you could look at it as, well, you could see it as a supernatural thing, or you could see it as this thing. And potentially with a game like this, that to me, I feel like would take away a lot of this kind of hesitancy that I have for saying like, yes, I really absolutely love this game. Um, you know, if there were a couple more clues that you could find that maybe made this theory of, of multiple lives something that like we could entertain to where we could say, oh, it's, it's this or this, you know? Um, and potentially, like, an, a, an extra couple endings that, again, like, went down that path. So, it reminds me of, like, Pan's Labyrinth. Like, Pan's Labyrinth is something where you could look at it, at the, this, I'm talking about the movie, you could look at it as, this is a real-life thing that happened to this person, or maybe it was all supernatural. Like, there's, the, they created enough evidence for both sides, and I, that is something that I genuinely like. And I feel like if that was a component of this, we could look at it as both ways. And I feel like that is also something that would, I feel like, help this franchise. Because the third game is coming out soon. By the time this video comes out, the, the third game will already probably be out. And I feel like this development team has had, at this point, a history of kind of... typecasting itself in their endings. We have Until Dawn, a game that... Um, I'm going to try not to spoil, but a game that starts off where the twist is it's something supernatural that is a spoiler i'm sorry man of madon it starts off seeming very supernatural turns out it's a realistic thing and there's no alternative ways to look at either one of these things you believe in god absolutely not this is the we'll trailer for the next game we are under attack by i don't know what I wouldn't believe me even if I tried. Hell, <laughs> I don't believe in how it's there. In Sumerian myth, they say the souls of the dead went deep underground to the house of ashes. 
where they lived on dust plagued by the demons of the underworld. So, going back to what I was saying, um, Supermassive Games, these, these developers have kind of created a pattern here that I don't feel like is helping them very much with these games. Um, of course, I love these games, I buy these games, I play these games. I love the mystery of them especially, but I feel like they're ruining their mystery a little bit. Because we have Until Dawn where you don't think it's something supernatural, and, and the shock of that is it's something supernatural like it honestly is and there's no other way to look at it there, there just isn't we have man of madon where it starts off where you think it's something supernatural like those are all the clues that we get or those are the things that we think it is right you get these clues you find out it's not something supernatural there's like a realistic rational explanation for it and i really think the game the plot of man of madon could have been helped with some clues or something that could have given that uh, uh, given a supernatural explanation some more weight so that way we could look at it as two different possibilities i think that could have helped man of Madon. and now we have little hope where these the the story is we think it's something supernatural again turns out it's not again it, it is a man who's been struggling with trauma processing through that trauma and so basically what i'm saying is this this game development company has created a precedent where fans who've been following this franchise and following this game development company, I feel like are going to come to it. Like we learn from everything. We learn from all of our previous experiences. And, and I feel like they are training us to expect that. And that's why I feel like too, they, they would benefit from creating these alternate ways to look at it. And they could still have twists within these alternate ways of looking at it too, right? Like you could think it's one supernatural thing and then it's another supernatural thing or one rational explanation and then another. Like you can create you can create twists and turns within these these different alternate explanations, but having both of them creates more more mystery and and different ways of looking at it and more replayability too. More work on their end, I'm sure, but I feel like as a fan, I'm getting trained to to sit there and go Oh, if you're telling me it's supernatural, like the, if these are the hints that I'm getting, then I know it's not. Or if you're telling me it's realistic or, and rational, I know it's not because just of the history of how these games have gone. And I feel like that's going to become a weakness of these as they continue to go. And so I really do hope with House of Ashes that they kind of break that cycle because I just think that that will help them as they continue to do these games, assuming that they do more after that. So a bit conflicted on the mental health of this one. I like mental health represented. I like the conversations about it. I just wish it wasn't the punchline. I feel like that's the biggest thing for me. If it's something that isn't the big reveal, that's, I love that. When it's the big reveal, that's where I get hesitant about it. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game and the video, and I'll see you next time, hopefully in House of Ashes.